Korean exchanges passed regulation. So apparently there were 14 uh, cryptocurrency exchanges that actually self-regulated themselves and 12 of them actually passed. Now the key word is self-regulated. Um, right now the KBA or Korean Blockchain Association has formed this uh, governing body. And uh, Mike, so who are, who, who are composed of this KBA by the way? Okay, so within the KBA, it consists of uh, blockchain companies, so blockchain firms within the space, mm -hmm. as well as cryptocurrency exchanges, all from Korea, of course. So what they do is they become the official body between users and exchanges. So they say that there are certain minimum requirements that exchanges have to meet so that users will be protected when they invest. So as we all know, there are people who know nothing about cryptocurrency. They don't know anything about security. But since they see it's a hot topic, they want to get into it. They want to make some fast money. So in an unregulated space, as much as we all like it in the past, it is dangerous for people who have no knowledge. It is dangerous for people who have less knowledge. So this body comes in between to be the buffer, to be kind of a guardian sort of, that tells people what are the minimum requirements, what is the safety regulations. And yes, it is self-governed, it is uh, self-created and they adhere to their own guidelines, but it is a step in the right direction. So what do you think about this KBA with regards to the Korean government? I think that uh, as long as the Korean government or uh, has some kind of uh, hand in it, okay, mm. because at the end of the day, every single piece of regulation has to go through the country. Mm. Okay, and if let's say the K KBA wants to play ball and eventually wants to be the so-called um, the the big brother for the space, it has to it has to uh, form a partnership or at least has a lot of insights from the existing government's uh, regulatory uh, regulatory uh, association. So in this case, the FSC, mm. right? And uh, we want to at least observe for the fact if this starts to pass, you're going to see other countries adopt the same thing as well. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I hope that uh, in, in terms of the guidelines are going to be transparent and also worked upon as, as the, the months go by or as the years go by. So that way, right, every single company or fintech company, uh, startup that wants to step into the space, uh, especially for the ICOs, has a guideline to follow. Okay. And then with this guideline, they are able to uh, comply and also be in line with whatever fundraising uh, activities that have to be done. At the same time also, there's also compliance and also accountability for investors, right? Uh, it, it, the problem is every single ICO that comes out from any country at the moment, there's very, very low to poor accountability. That is the problem why this space is getting burned left, right and center, especially if you're an investor. Well, the KBA has come up with a set of guidelines. They have told the people what they are looking out for. So they gave exchanges fair warning and then they proceeded to go on with the checks. So some of the things they looked out for was like minimum total assets, uh, adoption of a co-wallet, and they handle the user's funds differently than they handle their own funds. Uh, of course, anti-money laundering. So the chairman of the KBA has actually mentioned that okay, these checks are not uh, doesn't indicate that the exchange is completely secure. It's a bit like a driving license. So you may pass your driving. It doesn't mean you're a good driver, but you have a basic standard there. If you want to stay updated with the latest blockchain and cryptocurrency news, do catch us every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or 8 p.m. Singapore Standard Time. Consider subscribing to our channel and don't forget to click on the notification bell. We'll see you in the next episode.